to the latest in the 2020 race. Today would have marked the start of the Democratic National Convention in Milwaukee. But due to the pandemic, the, the event has been postponed till August 17th. Democrats are planning a scaled down, largely virtual convention. Meanwhile, questions are looming over what the Republican National Convention will look like. It is set to take place August 24th in Jacksonville, Florida, where coronavirus cases continue to climb. The original plan to host the convention in Charlotte, North Carolina, was scrapped after Governor Roy Cooper refused to guarantee a full-capacity event. CBS News is looking at how the coronavirus outbreak is impacting the presidential race across the Sun Belt. Our latest battleground tracker results show Joe Biden gaining an edge among voters who are unhappy with the way their states are handling the pandemic. CBSN political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns is here to break it all down for us. Hi, Caitlin. Great to see you. So let's start with the conventions. A lot of questions surrounding the conventions. We know Democrats are completely overhauling the traditional format in light of COVID-19. So what is it likely to look like? Hi, Tanya. Well, I'm coming to you from my apartment in New York City and not in Milwaukee, as we were scheduled to do uh, before this pandemic hit. A couple of months ago, the DNC uh, pushed the convention back to August, a week before the Republicans are set to hold their convention. And we're getting an idea of what that convention next week, next month, for Democrats might look like. Uh, the committee has told reporters that uh, they are likely to have a virtual convention. They expect Joe Biden to accept the nomination officially in Milwaukee, but to have uh, programming uh, virtually uh, in some satellite cities as well. And they said on Friday that they have plans in place to allow the delegates to vote on things like the party platform and all official business, including the official nomination, all through a virtual platform, a digital platform that they are uh, guiding uh, delegates through. So that means they are discouraging any delegates from actually going to Milwaukee to Milwaukee next month. They want them to stay at home and vote remotely. Of course, that's a huge contrast to what the RNC and the president want to plan for their convention. Yeah, all right. So let's talk about that now. President Trump had previously insisted on hosting a full capacity convention. How has the situation in Florida changed since they relocated the event to Jacksonville? And do we know that in light of the huge surge of coronavirus cases in Florida, whether the Republican Party will adjust to this new reality? Yeah, that's a great point, noting that the spike in cases in Florida are really uh, creating a lot of headaches for Republicans who wanted and the president who wanted to hold a convention in Florida. Uh, that is the biggest factor that has changed uh, since the president moved uh, the convention to Jacksonville. So a couple of things to consider that are going on on the ground in Florida right now. You mentioned the spike in cases that we continue to see in Jacksonville in particular. There is an order to wear masks when you can't social distance. Uh, the state of Florida has put uh, a limit on 50% uh, capacity for events, which means kind of these big rallies indoors would just not be possible under the current executive order. And the mayor of Jacksonville, who's a longtime Republican who has been wanting the president to come to his city, is actually in a self-quarantine himself right now because he was exposed to someone who tested positive for coronavirus. Now, the mayor himself has tested negative, but is taking those precautions uh, as well. Uh, and so there are a lot of factors going on here. The president himself, in an interview uh, last week, said that he would actually be flexible to uh, seeing what happens with this convention. But we know that he has been advocating for an in-person uh, big convention. Uh, we also know that the campaign is, is looking at kind of uh, whether people will actually want to come and show up during a pandemic. Uh, we saw with the president's rally in Tulsa that attendance was far less than anticipated over the weekend. The the president scrapped a campaign rally intended to uh, be held in New Hampshire over the weekend. Uh, and so those questions remain as well. The governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, has said that he would be open to uh, having an outdoor kind of rally, but we'll see. There is uh, talk, though, uh, of different possibilities. And this, there's no doubt this is creating headaches for uh, the president and the RNC, especially as some Republicans, uh, key Republican lawmakers, have said to us that they 
they are not comfortable attending the convention at this point. Sure, and we know that a visual the president does not like is a visual of a convention center that's not full. So another thing for them to consider. All right, so Caitlin, in our latest polls, Joe Biden is leading President Trump by six points in Florida. The two are tied in Arizona, and it's a competitive race in Texas where Biden is down by just one point. So talk to us about what is driving these results in these battleground states. That's right. Well, these are three states that are battlegrounds that have also seen a surge in coronavirus cases, so important to zero in on them. The biggest thing fueling Biden's rise in those states, his lead in Florida and this virtual tie, essentially, in Texas and Arizona, is his support among women. He is doing very well among women voters, uh, especially white women with a college degree, a subset of the electorate that we saw play uh, hu uh, a critical role for Democrats in the 2018 midterms. We also see him narrowing the gap among uh, white women in general. And remember, in 2016, Donald Trump was able to win white women. So narrowing the gap there and overperforming Hillary Clinton uh, among women, uh, especially, and also among Latino voters in Arizona. So that's important as well. We also see him narrowing the gap among senior voters, those over the age of 65, a demographic that President Trump does very very well in. We see that number narrowing a bit, especially uh, in Florida. Interesting, considering that demographic is also the one that is very largely worried about the coronavirus pandemic. So what else are the polls telling us about how the coronavirus pandemic is shaping this race? I mean, when it comes to, like you said, older voters who are part of Trump's base for, you know, for to a large degree, is the coronavirus pandemic and the way the White House is perceived to, to have handled it shaping some of their views? That is certainly at play in these three battleground states that have seen a surge in cases recently. Uh, what's interesting is that a majority in these states say that the efforts to contain the virus have been handled poorly. Uh, and majorities also say that these states opened up again too quickly under pressure from the Trump administration. So those are some things to watch out for. We see among Biden supporters uh, that the uh, fear of the pandemic and uh, negative views of the handling of the pandemic have really uh, fueled the support for Biden backers. Uh, we see conversely, though, um, that the Trump supporters say that the economy is something that is